Hello, my name is Leopold Armesto and in this presentation we are continue by learning how to use Facilino and particularly we are going to present some exercises uh, in order to work with the, fire, uh, with the kitchen of the intelligent house. So this is the outline of the presentation. We are going to briefly review the kitchen electronics and then we have three exercises, one for detecting the smoke, another one for detecting the fire and a, and a third exercise in which we combine fire and smoke detection. So remember that the kitchen, the, the, the aim is to detect smoke uh, using the gas sensor and to prevent fire using the flame sensor. And we can use a servo in order to open and close a window and a buzzer in order to produce an alarm uh, in order to, to warn the user of the house. And um, these are the proposed connections of each of the components and the corresponding Arduino pins. And these are the, or this is the, uh, the proposed electronic circuit with how to connect things. This, uh, the one on the left, it's for uh, connecting, uh, or uh, it's a diagram in, in Fritzing, so you, you can identify the, the elements. And this, this, uh, this uh, picture here on the right, it's the equivalent a Tinkercad uh, circuit that we use uh, for our simulations. So on the first exercise, the idea is to detect smoke. So in the presence of smoke, uh, the gas sensor, which is connected to A4, uh, if, if detects smokes, then it has to uh, generate an alarm. And for that, we use a buzzer, which is connected to pin D5. And for that, we use a NIF comparator. We use this read gas instruction here, which basically, as you can see, is a simply an analog read uh, instruction. Uh, and if it's above, uh, above uh, 500 that means that there's gas and if it's below in this case 350 then the gas is gone and meanwhile we have gas then we will generate an alarm and this alarm function it's something we saw already in uh, in the video with the flow control exercises which contains uh, or it calls this function here in order to generate a varying frequency uh, tone of the buzzer uh, in order to uh, basically simulate uh, an alarm. So this is the, the, the Tinkerquad circuit that we use uh, for, for running this code. Let me click on, the, on this uh, link to see exactly how, how this works. So this is uh, the gas sensor, as you can see. Let me play the simulation. And when we click here on the on the gas sensor, you can actually hear the, the, uh, the sound. And this is simulating the presence or the absence of smoke. So if we move this cloud here outside the gas sensor, there's no smoke. And we, if we put it closer, then you can hear the, the buzzer beeping. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. In this second example, the idea is to detect fire. It's a very similar example as before. But the difference is that once it's activated because it's fire, uh, uh, we say or we impose that uh, the alarm should be stay at least, here we, we use 10 seconds, but of course in a real example could be much, much longer, but it should stay for, for a given time and independently if the fire has extinguished or not. Okay, so once the alarm is triggered, then we require at least to be the alarm beeping for some time and for that we use these instructions here we 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 have a variable which is called fire time and fire fire will uh, basically uh, uh, used for detect or uh, indicating that there's fire or not and fire time it's stored when there was no fire and the sensor detects fire the flame sensor detects fire then we set the variable to true the fire variable to true and then we stored our current time and then later if there's fire and the time has not elapsed, that's this operation here. So it's the current time minus the, the, the time we, we, we kept at this moment is bigger than, in this case, 10 seconds. Then, uh, if, it's, if that's the case and we don't have fire anymore, then only in that case we set this variable to false. So in the, in the presence of fire, we beat the, the buzzer. So let me run this example here uh, to see how it works. 
the timing, because of the simulation time, it's much more slow than the, the real-time clock. Okay, so 10 seconds here, it's actually a, a long, very long time, so we won't wait uh, until the end. Okay, but so here you can see the, the, the photo uh, transistor, so if we activate it, we start hearing the sound, and even after we deactivate, so after we deactivate, we can see that the sound is still on. Okay, after some time, that automatically deactivates. And in this last example, the idea is to combine both uh, sensors. So if we use the, fla the flame and the gas sensor, so in, uh, we will use uh, a servo in order to control the window, and it will be open if there's gas, so we want all this gas to go out. Uh, but in case of fire, we will close the window, so we prevent the, the, uh, uh, the entrance of oxygen that will keep the fire alive. So that's why we close the window, okay? And for that, we can use this code here. It's a combination in which we can use this um, condition in order to detect fire, I mean gas, and if there's no fire, then we open the window. And if there's no gas, we just simply uh, store this variable uh, to false. And if there's fire, we set the fire variable to true. And if uh, we close the window, and after some time and there's no fire, whatever, it's when we set the variable to false, and here the buzzer will be beeping if there's fire or if there's gas. So let me uh, show this example here, how it works. Okay, so let me uh, start. Uh, let me, okay, not right now there's no... Uh, there's no gas, no fire, so if, the, if I put this uh, cloud here, then the window position changes. If I just simply move it outside, the window just simply keeps as it was, that's fine. So it's, it's um, right now it's beeping, no, it's not beeping. And now it's, uh, now if I generate this position here, uh, now there's fire and uh, the window has closed and after if i remove the fire and um, i wait some time then it stops beeping okay well that's everything we want to, to say and in this presentation we have introduced some exercises in order to learn how to program the kitchen of our intelligent house with fatalino thank you very much